Give peace, O Lord, to those who wait for you, that your prophets be found true. Hear the prayers of your servant and of your people Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. At the beginning of the Eucharist, we call to mind and confess our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, whose only Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence, Give us pure hearts and steadfast wills to worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of Paul to the church at Corinth. Brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, the gospel that you received and in which you are firmly established because the gospel will save you only if you keep believing exactly what I preach to you. Believing anything else will not lead to anything. Well then, in the first place, I taught you what I had been taught myself, namely that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, that he appeared first to Kephas and secondly to the twelve. Next, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me too. It was as though I was born when no one expected it. I am the least of the apostles. In fact, since I persecuted the Church of God, I hardly deserve the name Apostle. But by God's grace, that is what I am. And the grace that he gave me has not been fruitless. On the contrary, I, or rather the grace of God that is with me, have worked harder than any of the others but what matters is that I preach what they preach, and this is what you all believed. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. The Lord's right hand has triumphed, his right hand raised me up. I shall not die, I shall live and recount his deeds. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. You are my God, I thank you, my God, I praise you. I will thank you, for you have given answer, and you are my Saviour. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. Alleluia, alleluia, God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself and he has entrusted to us the news that they are reconciled. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the Pharisees invited Jesus to a meal. When he arrived at the Pharisee's house and took his place at table, a woman came in who had a bad name in that town. She had heard he was dining with the Pharisee and had brought with her an alabaster jar of ointment. She waited behind him at his feet, weeping, and her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them away with her hair, 
Then she covered his feet with kisses and anointed them with the, anoint with the ointment. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who this woman is that is touching him and what a bad name she has. Then Jesus took him up and said, Simon, I have something to say to you. Speak, Master, was the reply. There was once a creditor who had two men in his debt. One owed him 500 and re the other 50. They were unable to pay, so he pardoned them both. Which of them will love him more? The one who was pardoned more, I suppose, answered Simon. Jesus said to him, you are right. Then he turned to the woman. Simon, he said, you see this woman, I came into your house and you poured no water over my feet, but she has poured out her tears over my feet and wiped them away with her hair. You gave me no kiss, but she's been covering my feet with kisses ever since I came in. You did not anoint my head with oil, but she has anointed my feet with ointment. For this reason, I tell you that her sins, her many sins, must have been forgiven her, or she would not have shown such great love. It is the man who is forgiven little who shows little love. Then he said to her, your sins are forgiven. Those who were with him at table began to say to themselves, Who is this man that he even forgives sins? But he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So we pray that we may know in our hearts and in our minds what it is to be forgiven. To be forgiven by God, to be forgiven by others. And we pray that we may be agents of forgiveness, bringers of reconciliation where there is conflict and division. We pray that we, like St Paul, may turn from our former ways to live the Gospel, to point to Christ, our Redeeming Lord. We continue our prayers for our world at this time, for all who are suffering with the coronavirus and for all who are working to find a cure for it. We continue our prayers for those in the front line, for people who work in our nursing homes and in our hospitals. We pray for children back to school or St John's School in our parish. I ask your prayers for Woodard schools across the country. We call before the Father those we know to be in need, especially those sick and needy on our parish list. And we call to mind our love for all those who have gone before us, who rejoice with us but on another shore and in a greater light, that multitude which no one can number. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen.
we commend ourselves and all those for whom we have prayed to the intercession of the blessed and most glorious Virgin Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God for ever. O God, we ask you to receive us. And please, with the sacrifice we offer, in our, with humble and contrite hearts. Look with kindness on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these, your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honour of your name may serve the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that, by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice, made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice with praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Hildegard of Bingen, remembered today, with St John our patron, the apostles, the martyrs and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, who by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit through your death gave life to the world. Free me by this, your most holy body and blood, from all my sins and from every evil. Keep me always faithful to your commandments and never let me be parted from you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of Christ bring me to everlasting life. May the blood of Christ bring me to everlasting life. The chalice of blessing that we bless is a communion in the blood of Christ and the bread that we break is a sharing in the body of the Lord. Merciful God, the source of truth and love, keep us faithful to the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, united in prayer and the breaking of bread, and one in joy and simplicity of heart, in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may Almighty God bless us, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us abide in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <clears throat>